Hi, and welcome back to day five of the Hemlock Tea video sew along. As we mentioned back in our first lesson, you can sew the Hemlock Tea with either a sewing machine or a serger. Today, I'll be showing you how to assemble the Hemlock Tea using your serger. If you're working with a sewing machine, you wanna check out our previous lesson. Some of you may be wondering, what is a serger? A serger is a machine with the ability to cut, sew, and finish your fabric all at the same time. It has multiple needles and threads, as well as loopers instead of bobbins that allow the thread to wrap around the edge of the fabric. Traditionally, sergers come in three thread and four thread. The Bernina L450 I'm using here is a four thread, but sergers are available with more threads in combination machines. Now I want to address something that we get asked a lot. What is the difference between a serger and an overlocker? Um, the answer is nothing. There are two names for the exact same machine. Depending on where you live, you'll likely call it one or the other, but that's the only difference. Unlike a sewing machine, sergers can sew and finish the edge of your fabric at the same time. While knits generally don't unravel the way wovens do, this allows you a nice, neat seam allowance. If you look at your ready-to-wear knit garments, they're almost certainly sewn with a serger. Since we're using a machine with a powerful knife, you're going to want to see whatever pin you choose clearly as it approaches the knife. You really do not want to cut a pin, and any good serger will chop right through that pin, <laughs> and it can dull your blade or throw the entire machine timing off. Because of this, I use the Clover flower head pins because it's hard to miss a giant flower coming up as you sew, but Wonder Clips are also a good choice as they won't fit under the knife of your machine. You can see the flower head pins go smoothly into the fabric. And if you want to use a Wonder Clip, you would just clip at the seam. As we mentioned in the first and fourth lessons, you're going to want to use knit specific needles in your machine. There are a few types of needles appropriate for knits, which I'll go through now, but keep in mind that sometimes sergers require a different type of needle than a sewing machine needle. My Bernina L450 serger uses sewing machine needles, but you'll need to check the manual to see what your specific machine requires. Jersey or ballpoint needles go by both names depending on what brand you're using. These needles have a slightly more rounded tip than universal needles, which in theory should reduce damage to your knit fabric while you sew. Ballpoint needles are great for more loosely knit fabrics without stretch fibers like Lycra. Stretch needles also have a rounded tip, but in addition to that, they have a deeper scarf, which allows the thread to tuck more tightly into the needle when passing through the fabric. This makes them a great choice for more tightly knit fabrics and fabrics with a lot of Lycra. If you're getting skipped stitches with your Jersey ballpoint needle, give a stretch needle a try. Make sure you experiment with needles on your fabrics before you start sewing. Although this description of when to use what needle seems fairly straightforward, often things don't behave in ways you would expect. I named off a long list of stretch stitches on my sewing machine, but with a serger there are far fewer stitches to choose from. Generally speaking, your serger, if it's a four thread like mine, will have a four thread overlock, a three thread overlock, a few variations on those stitches, a flat lock stitch, and a rolled hem. When assembling a garment, I prefer to use a four thread overlock stitch for most applications because it's a bit stronger than the three thread. Here you can see what a four thread overlock stitch looks like on the same jersey fabric we used in our previous lesson. It's a nice even stitch and has a good amount of stretch. You can see here it's nice and even on the front and the back doesn't restrict the fabric. And when pressed open, it looks great on the back. And it also looks great on the front. Similarly to using your sewing machine, it's often helpful to reduce the presser foot pressure on your serger if possible. This can help to keep your fabric from stretching out as you sew. Not every machine has this option, but if yours does, it's a great way to reduce drag on the top layer of knits. There's one additional thing you'll want to double check before you start surging away on your tee, and that's the differential feed. This is a really important step to ensuring that you don't have wavy seams when using a serger. On your serger, there are two sets of feed dogs, a front and a back set, which move independently of each other. You want the front feed dogs to travel a greater distance than the back ones, which fall to the back of the needle. 
This will allow the front to take up enough fabric so that the rear feed dogs don't stretch the fabric while you sew. Here you can see the effects of setting the differential feed too low for a fabric here on the left, here with the proper feed, and here on the right with the differential feed set too high. You can see if the differential feed is set too low, the fabric gathers in on itself. The proper setting is nice and straight, and too high creates an outward curve. You'll want to test this out on a scrap of your garment fabric before you start, as the amount of stretch in your fabric will affect this setting. Not all machines have differential feed. On my machine, the dial to adjust it is here on the side. If your machine has this, it's a great tool to really up your overlocking game. As when working with your sewing machine, avoid stretching or pulling on the fabric against the feed dogs as it passes through your serger. You'll also want to avoid letting the fabric hang off your sewing machine table. Check that the stitch isn't stretching the fabric, resulting in a wavy seam line. If it's just a bit wavy, head over to your iron and give the fabric some steam, gently patting the fabric back into place to relax the knit. If this helps and the fabric lays flat, you're okay. If not, it's time to make a few adjustments. Now that we've got the basics of working with knits on your serger out of the way, it's time to turn this pile of pieces into a hemlock tee. Okay, to begin, we're gonna start with our front and our back. Lay your back with the face up and then lay the front down on top of it, right sides together. We're going to align the shoulder seams. Stick a few pins in there. And then we're gonna head over to the serger to sew our shoulder seams. All right, now before you start sewing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you know where one quarter inch from the leftmost needle is. So for me, that's right even with my blade. Um, so I'm not really going to be cutting anything off. So just make sure you double check that on your machine. And with a serger, you don't need to raise and lower the presser foot all the time. You can just lift up the front of the foot. Remove your pin. And then much like using a sewing machine, I just chain off the neckline. And then trim that open. And you don't need to secure these tails because they're going to be sewn into another seam. I will show you how to secure a tail when we do the neck band. So now it's iron time. So we are ready to press our shoulder seams. We're going to want to press them to the back of the garment. And I'm going to do this over a sleeve roll. I don't know. I just find it easier. So again, front is here, back is here. Make sure your seam allowance is towards the back. And give that a press. And I'm doing that thing again where I use my hand as a press cloth, but you should make a press cloth. <laughs> One of these days I will, I swear. Now the other shoulder, again, make sure we have the front. Seam is pressed to the back. that. And this is a wool blend, which is why I'm giving it so much steam. Depending on what fabric you're using, you may have a different temperature or steam setting. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go put our sleeves in. Now again, we're sewing a concave to a convex curve. So when we go to line the other notches up, the armhole is going to curl over on us. So there we have our notches here. And just one more right here, align the ends. Um, and again, you can stick a pin in here if you want. 
completely up to you. So now we're going to go over to the machine and sew this seam. Okay, so align the underarm underneath the foot. And you're going to start sewing, making sure you remove your pins as you come to them. And you can see I'm double checking that everything's aligned as I go around the curve. You're also going to want to make sure you have no lumps here. So if you flip the sleeve up, you want to make sure the underlying fabric is smooth. So keep an eye on that as you go around since we're sewing two different types of curves together. And here we have a lump, so I'm just gonna smooth that out. And also make sure you're not pulling or pushing the fabric through. Let the feed dogs do the work. And another thing that I like to do is, um, when I get to the end, I don't want my hand to go too close to that. It's also hard to get your hand in there. So I use a pin to guide my fabric through. And again, these are being sewn into the side seam, so we do not need to secure these thread ends. Now let's head over to the iron. Okay, so since we have these two opposing curves, we're gonna wanna press it over a ham. So, Put your ham underneath the armhole. Your seam allowance is going to go towards the sleeve, so make sure that's facing the right direction. And give it a press. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your shoulder seam is going into the armhole seam in the right direction. If not, I recommend taking it out um, it's hard to really feel it while you wear it, but it's just a thing that drives me nuts. So give that a nice press there. Again, I'm using my hand as a press cloth. Um, one of these days I'll get a press cloth, but I recommend that you get a press cloth and don't do what I do. <laughs> Also, I'm using a wool fabric, uh, which is why I'm using so much steam. The amount of steam and heat you use will be dependent on what fabric you're using. So just keep that in mind. All right, so our sleeve is now in. We are going to do that to the other armhole and sleeve, and then we'll sew the side seams. All right, now that we have both sleeves set in, we are going to sew up the side seams. So to do that, simply fold the front over the back. And align the side and underarm seam. Here you can see we are, we're already almost done with our shirt. So I like to start by pinning the underarm seam. I usually put a pin at both ends and then I just kind of half the center of the sleeve and then for the body I do the same thing align the bottom and then pin through there so one thing I like to pay attention to is what direction I'm sewing the seam here. Since the underarm seams are pressing towards the sleeve, it's gonna be a lot easier if it goes through your machine in that direction. So I like to start at the hem of the body, sew up through the underarm, and then down. So 
here's the point where you need to watch where the two seams are. Again, I like to use my pin to aid me in getting through here. Just kind of like that. And it went right through. And this is a side note, but if you've ever wondered why sergers kind of just go when you press on the pedal, they have an AC motor and your sewing machine has a DC motor. So that's why sewing on one feels so different from sewing on the other. But eventually your foot will get used to the motor, um, just like when you were learning to drive a car. And it won't be so scary. Alright, now once again these are getting sewn into something else, so you do not need to anchor your seam allowances here, or sorry, anchor your thread tails here. All right, now it's time to press our underarm seam. So start by turning your sleeve right side out. I would usually press this seam over the edge of the ironing board, but it's hard to get that on video, so I'm going to use a sleeve roll for this part. Simply place the sleeve roll under your seam and you want the seam going towards the back of the garment. So just double check you have the right direction and then press. Now even if I was pressing over the edge of the ironing board, here's where you'd need to get your sleeve roll out so that you can get inside the sleeve itself. You can see how nicely, hopefully you can see how nicely these underarm seams lined up. Uh, the pin through the machine really does help a lot. Just keep pressing to the end. And that side is done. Now repeat those steps for the other side. All right, now that we have our body fully assembled, it's time to work on our necklines. So just get that out of the way for a moment and grab your neckband piece. So for the neckband, we're gonna fold it right sides together so that the short ends meet. Then we are gonna pin that and head over to the machine to sew this seam. Place the neckband under the machine. Sew across it. You can clip these threads and then head over to the iron. Now we need to press the seam allowance and we're gonna do the same thing we did when using a sewing machine. And we're gonna press one half of the seam allowance to either side. This allows us to reduce bulk when we fold it over. So press that. And then the next step is to just fold the two raw edges to meet and press. And you're gonna work your way all the way around the neckband. All right, and here we are back at the beginning. Now we're gonna take this over to the table and quarter it. When inserting a neckband, I like to quarter the neckband. That way I find it easier to insert. So to do this, find your back side seam and fold the neckband in half along that. This will be your center front. So stick a pin in there. Then bring the pin to meet the center back seam. 
place a pin in the corner. And same thing for the other side. So now our neckband is quartered. So we need something to align that to because these quarters will not align with the shoulder seams. That's not a perfect quarter around the neckline. So now we need to quarter our neckline. So to do this, I start by just pinning the two shoulder seams together. And you're gonna take this pin out, but it's just a good anchor point. Now walk your neckband without stretching anything until you get to the center front. Place a pin in that and then do the same thing for the center back. Now unpin the shoulder seams and we're gonna find the side quarters. So bring the center front and center back pins together and then walk the neckline without stretching anything to find the quarter point. Now we need to align the neckband to the neckline. And I like to start with the center back you can start with wherever you want. This is just a personal thing. So align the seam with the center back pin. Pin that. Then align the next set of pins. And then you can see the neckband is smaller than the neckline. So I like to place a pin in the center of these two. So to do that, I grab the neckline and neckband like this and just pull the neckband until the neckline is straight, but you can see it's not pulled, it's not tight. Um, and then just stick a pin in the center there. Then align your center fronts. and place a pin between the, those two pins. Again, stretching the neckband, but not the neckline. So you can see the neckband tight, the neckline loose. And do the same thing for the remaining sections. You can put more pins in if you want, but then it just kind of turns into taking pins out constantly, um, but whatever you feel comfortable with. So our neckband is now pinned in place. We're going to head over to the machine and sew around this. All right, so now we need to sew the neckband. So I like to start just right behind the center back. I pull the neckband so that it's just the same length as the neckline. And with a serger, you're gonna kinda have to scoop over to the seam line. Um, it's not like a sewing machine where you can really lift the needle and put it down in a specific place. So. When you get to that point, you're gonna stretch the neckband again so that it's laying flat. And just keep repeating that as you go around. And here we're at the shoulder seam, so make sure that goes under the machine in the right direction. Stop to reposition as you need to.
neckline is never stretched during this pro process, only the neckband. So here we have the seam allowance again for the shoulder. So just make sure that's facing the right way. And here we are back at the beginning. So you can see here's the tail and here's where we kind of went onto the fabric. So I'm gonna go past it. So probably about to here. Then I need to quickly get the machine, the fabric out from under the machine. So I just scoot it to the side. And chain off a tail. So this fabric is not, sorry, this, so this thread chain does need to be tucked in because this is not getting sewn into anything else. We want to anchor this thread. So I take a needle, um, it's sort of blunt, has a huge eye, and I just thread the searcher chain through it. I go to the wrong side. You can do the right side, it doesn't matter. I just like to do the wrong side because it's the wrong side. And you're just going to go under a few stitches in one direction. Pull it through. So once I get to the top, I just weave back through the other direction. And having it go one way and then the other will anchor it in. You can do more than that. I've never found I need to. All right, so you can see here the neckline's looking pretty good. It's laying flat, it's not wavy, um, but now we just need to give it a press. Again, you're gonna wanna use your ham because it mimics the shape of your body. And the seam allowance will obviously press away from the neckband. Get yourself a press cloth. and just work your way around the neckline. Make sure your shoulder seams are still pressed to the right direction. You didn't catch anything and cause the seam allowance to go in an opposite direction of your original press. All right, now that our neckline is completed, we have the neckband in laying flat, looking beautiful. Um, you have the option of running a line of stitching around the neckline like we did in a previous episode. Um, it's up to you if you want to. I'm going to leave this one, but you could do zigzagging like we did previously, use a twin needle, or if you have access to a cover stitch, it's a great application as well. So now we're going to hem. Okay, so the hem allowance on the hemlock is three quarters of an inch. So come over to your ironing board and lay your hem out. Your garment should be inside out. And we're gonna press up three quarters of an inch. So I just set three quarters of an inch on my seam gauge and then measure around and press. Work your way around the hem. You can put pins in if you want. This fabric takes a press really well, so I'm not pinning. Um, but if you do put pins in, put them in this direction, not that direction. Okay, so now that our hem is pressed up, we need to stitch around it. We can't do that with a serger because of the way it functions. The loopers go around the fabric and therefore it would be impossible to hem. You would have thread coming around here, even if you lowered the knife. 
So at this point, you're gonna use either a stretch stitch, a zigzag, a twin needle, or a cover stitch machine to go around here. I'm gonna use a cover stitch since I already used a zigzag on the previous top. Um, so let's head over and start cover stitching. All right, so this is my cover stitch machine. It's a Bernina L220. It's sadly no longer in production. So when you cover stitch, you need to have the right side of the fabric facing up if you want the stitching on the top and the loop around the bottom. So you can feel where your um, hem is. You want that to hit about where this is. Um, this is a compensa compensating plate so you can see the two sides move independently of each other. So that's at this marking right here. Work your way all the way around. And when you get back to where you started, I like to clip these threads. Cover stitch will only unravel from one side, and that's the side you stop sewing with, so you can cut these close. And you're gonna wanna go back over these a tiny bit. So when you stop, raise your foot, take your tweezers, lift up the front of the foot, and just pull those threads out. Clip the threads and pull the fabric straight back. What this does is it locks your threads so you can just cut them without worrying about having to tie them off or anything. I never tie off my cover stitching and I've never had to fix one. So now we're just gonna head over and give that a little press. Okay, the hem is now complete, lays nice and flat. So you're gonna do the same thing for the sleeves and then we're all set. All right, so that is how you sew the hemlock tee with a serger, and it also wraps up this video so long. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this series. I hope I answered your questions and that you're feeling much more comfortable sewing up your hemlock tee and sewing with knits in general. You can subscribe to our channel below to make sure you don't miss any of our new uploads, and if you have any questions, also let us know in the comments. Thanks so much and enjoy your new tee!